Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We bless the name of the Lord for signs and wonders for every needy person. And today, as you are there, the hand of the Lord is going to touch you. Signs, wonders, miracles upon every life in Jesus' name. Tonight is the first night. And this first night, the Lord will reach you anywhere you are. Get ready. Signs and wonders for everyone. I will get it. What are you? I will get it. It will happen in Jesus' name. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you because we know you are ready to bless everyone. You love everyone. And everyone in need, your power is going to meet at the point of need in Jesus' name. Tonight, salvation. Tonight, healing. Tonight, deliverance. Tonight, the manifestation of your power in every life in Jesus' name. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, I want to tell you a story. And it's the story connected with a man in need, a boy in need, a family in need. And then there was Christ. And that Christ is here today. Is there by your side. And Jesus Christ met that man and he fulfilled any need in a very simple way. And the word of God says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday today and forever what he did in the story i'm going to read to you he will do in your life the same simple way the power of god was manifested to the man to the boy to the family to everyone available in that same way the lord will make his power his grace and his goodness to flow into your life today in Jesus' name. The story I'm reading to you is from John chapter 4. And I'm reading verse 48. If you have your Bible, if you don't, I'll read it. Just follow along. Then said Jesus unto him, Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Here was a man. He came to the Lord, and his son was at the point of death. And he said, Lord, I need your help. You need help tonight. Help is coming your way tonight. And then Jesus mentioned an important statement, important at that time, important today, and it will be important it will be important, remain important until we see the Lord face to face. Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Think about it. The Lord wanted the man to believe. But the man knew, the Lord knew, the only way that man will believe is that he will see signs and wonders. And tonight, he's calling you to believe. And then as you believe, you will see. You will hear. You will partake of signs and wonders in your life, in your family, in Jesus' name. 
Can you see something in that verse I read to you now? The need for signs and wonders. The necessity of signs and wonders. And Jesus said, it's necessary. It's important for you, for me, for everyone to see the signs and the wonders. Now I want to tell you that when Christ came, he made everybody, everybody that contacted him, he made them to see signs and wonders. Mary saw signs and wonders because the angel appeared unto Mary and then said she will conceive as a virgin. The power of the Holy Ghost will come upon him and that holy thing that shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. Mary saw the sign and then the shepherds in the field that heard about the birth of Christ. The angels came from heaven and they announced that the Lord Jesus was born. They saw the sign. In fact, the angel said, you will see a sign. You will see that babe that Isaiah had spoken about 800, 700 years before. You'll see him wrapped in swaddy clothes. They saw a sign. All those wise men from the east, they saw the star and they followed the star and eventually that sign, they never saw any star like that before leading anyone to a new baby that had been born. They saw a sign and then uh, Jesus started his ministry. They saw the sign and he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor, to open the eyes of the blind and to make the lame walk. They all saw signs. Look at Jesus on the cross of Calvary and look at him being crucified for you, giving his life for you and then eventually all those soldiers around they saw the sign by the time they got to him they saw already he had died and then on the third day jesus christ according to prophecy he died and then he was buried on the third day he rose again but before he rose again an angel came from heaven rolled away the stone there was a great earthquake they fell on their faces they saw a sign and then he revealed himself 40 days infallible proof talking about the kingdom of God and then on the final day he was talking to those disciples and he looked at him like this no aeroplane no helicopter it was going up and up they saw a sign he got to heaven everything about Christ about science is science and wonder and today you will partake of the science and the wonders salvation is coming to you eternal life is coming to you as they saw the signs at that time they came to the lord and they saw that sign tonight is your turn where are you you will see the signs in jesus name the need for signs and wonders Tonight, being introductory, we're not going to take much time. I'm going to talk to you just three things very briefly. Number one, number one is the proper foundation for signs and wonders. If you're going to build a good house, a massive edifice, you need foundation. And your faith needs foundation. And as you are watching and you want the signs and the wonders, the miracle and the healing and the deliverance, we need to have the foundation. Number one is the proper foundation for signs and wonders. Number two, the present freedom. Somebody is getting free today. Free from every yoke. Free from satanic power. Free from incurable disease. Somebody there tonight, you are getting your freedom in Jesus' name. A present day freedom, not the freedom of long ago, and it's coming your way. Our present freedom from sickness by His word. The word will come to you. 
And I'm telling you, when you hear the final amen after that prayer that we're going to pray, all the sicknesses and infirmities in your life, in your body, will vanish away in Jesus' name. Number three is personal faith. Personal faith. You know, as you come to the Lord, let's say, for example, somebody is hungry. No matter how much food I eat for you, your hunger will still be there. It has to be personal as the Lord provides the food, as he provides the power, as he provides the healing, as he provides the salvation. I cannot take that food for you. I cannot breathe for you. No matter how fast I breathe, how good I breathe, all that breathing will be for myself. You have to breathe for yourself. And if the doctor were to prescribe for you medicine, that medicine, I cannot say, okay, I know that you have difficulty taking the medicine. Let me take it on your behalf. No matter how much of the medicine that is recommended for you, I take, it's only for myself. I cannot take it for you. It has to be personal. And so you take that medicine yourself, you eat that food yourself, you breathe for yourself, and the same way you have the personal faith, believing on the Lord, you believe for yourself you are believing tonight somebody say Lord I believe a miracle will happen in your life personal faith in the Savior of the world is the Savior of the world he touches everyone he heals everyone that will believe and whosoever whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved, will be healed, will be delivered on the basis of personal faith in the Savior of the world. It will happen to you. What is the person I'm talking to there? It's coming your way and you receive in Jesus' name. Number one, number one is the proper foundation for signs and wonders. Let's come back to the story I'm reading to you tonight. It's in John chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 46. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee. Came again, came again. We've been here before, we're here again. When we're here before, miracles happened, great things happened. And as we're here again, something greater will happen. I said something greater will happen. I was there in the 80s. That was my first time of being here then. And you remember, at that time, there was, you know, I would preach the word and then exalted the Lord Jesus Christ. Many miracles happened and deaf ears opened. But those who are long in deeper life here, you remember, there was one psalm. And he had uh, this uh, madness. He was collecting things on the street. And he had all these dirty things around him. For four years, he had been like that. And eventually, as uh, you know, he was passing by in front of the church without any hands being laid on him, the power of God came upon him. He became healed instantaneously. And then the ushers took him and they shaved him and, you know, cleaned him up and then preached the word to him. He became born again, became a member of the church. We were here before, we are here again. Something good is coming your way. We were having a retreat here, that is a gathering of our members. And then there were other people that joined them. And the wife was blind, the man was lame, or maybe it's the other way around. The woman lame and the, and the man blind. And then we prayed after that short prayer, that the kind of prayer that is coming to you today, and you are going to receive. I said you are going to receive. After the prayer, that a woman got up, Paralysis gone, stroke gone, 
and then she started walking normally if you are lame there today if you have stroke there today power is coming your way you will rise up and walk in jesus name and then the people were jubilating and shouting they were happy and the husband who was blind said what happened why are people shouting why are they jubilating like that and they said your wife is no more lame your wife is walking when the man had that his own eyes got open all those things that happened before again as we're here today something greater is going to happen so 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 jesus came again into cana of galilee where he made the water wine and there was a certain noble man whose son was sick at capernaum noble man great man vip the son was sick at capernaum and then in verse 47 it says when he heard that jesus was come out of judea into galilee he went unto him my question is where will this man a noble man where will he go to jesus christ he heard what you are hearing tonight he heard testimonies that happened in other places with other people and you are hearing tonight he took action action you see there are people they come like this they have problems they have burden they have sin they have sorrow they are suffering and yet they hear and they do not come they are spectators they're in the clapping corner they're so happy for other people, but the man said, I will not be a spectator, I will be a partaker. Somebody there, I will not be a spectator, I will be a partaker. And so he came to Jesus and he besought him that he will come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death the son was at the point of death my question is noble man why will you leave all the suggested superstitious solutions and then come to jesus as your as your son is at the point of death and i can hear him replying because that Jesus is the foundation, is the foundation of our salvation. For you to get saved, come to that foundation, is the foundation of the power of God. And for you to taste and have and partake of the power of God, come to this foundation, is the one on which you can build a gracious life, a good life, a commendable life come to this foundation and then your life will turn around bad life will become good life sorrowful life will become a happy life a useless life will become a worthy life a profitable life he is the foundation of anyone of any success that you desire and if you want success you've tried you've labored you've struggled and that success has not been there christ is the foundation and as you come to this foundation things are turning around your life today and you know the man did not do anything that we cannot do he just rose up and then he came to the lord with the faith in his heart that is the foundation the foundation of life and the foundation of our living a life that is pleasing unto god he said without me you can do nothing you might try by yourself and think that you'll pull yourself up by the straps of your boot you cannot do it if you're going to amount to anything significant for heaven and significant for the almighty god you have to come to this foundation and you can and you can 
Nobody assisted the man, but he came and he besought him and said, Come, heal my son, for he was at the point of death. That's when Jesus then uttered the statement in chapter 4, verse 48. Then said Jesus unto him, said Jesus unto him, except ye see signs, plural, and wonders, plural, except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. You will see. I will see signs and wonders as I believe tonight in Jesus name look at verse 49 in our story the noble man says unto him sir come down here my child die come down it's urgent your case is urgent the forgiveness of sin in your life urgent the healing of sickness in your body urgent and the manifestation of the great power of God urgent in your life and today the Lord will make you see the Lord will make you have if you have been blind for how many years now the urgent thing the Lord wants to do tonight is open those blind eyes if you have been lame, paralyzed, and impotent, and you couldn't do anything yourself to move from one place to the other, your urgent case is that the power of the Lord will touch you. And then you will rise and walk in Jesus' name. And just about a few years ago, I think, and just two, three years ago, or oh, in Taraba State, or maybe five years now, and there was this man, young man, who was totally, completely um, unable to do anything because the hands were paralyzed and the feet were paralyzed, and then he had to use uh, some kind of a little uh, rolling board to be moving and out crawling like an animal. And then we were there in Jalingo, and those who are in Jalingo will remember that after I spoke about Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then we prayed, short prayer, like the prayer tonight. And that prayer will catch fire in your life. It will burn every infirmity out of your life tonight in Jesus' name. And remember, the legs were paralyzed, the hands were paralyzed, and the man was just, uh, you know, trying to move uh, on a rolling board. And everybody knew him in town because he was like a beggar in the town. And then, as we mentioned the name of Jesus, the power in that name of Jesus went to that man. He was just in the crowd like you're in the crowd tonight. And the Lord touched him, and then he felt power on his hips, and felt power in his knees, and felt power in his hands. He felt, I can stand up. And the first time, after 23 years of paralysis, he got up. I said he got up. And then he lifted up all those things he had been using to move about. He was totally healed. And when he came out to give testimony, he walked like a gentleman. And you too tonight, you'll walk like a gentleman. The power of heaven will touch you because Jesus did it at that time. And Jesus is going to do it tonight. He is the foundation for signs and wonders. That's why he came, and that's why you're coming. That's why you're coming. There's no other foundation that any man can lay than that which is laid already, even Jesus. Let me come to number two now. Number two is the presage freedom. When is your freedom? I said, when is your freedom? Now, but understand the present freedom from sickness by his word. You know, Jesus Christ, he is the word personified. In fact, the Bible says, in the beginning was God, and the word 
the evening was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us was that saying all that Jesus is is in his word his power is in his word his salvation is in his word his healing is in his word his deliverance and his power and dominion over every power that may be all that power, all that dominion is in the world. And so, your freedom is in the world. I said your freedom is in the world. Anybody having insanity, you are going to be free because the freedom we find in his word. Look at the story we're reading in John chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 50. And Jesus said unto him, Remember, the son about to die was far away. And only the father was here before the Lord Jesus Christ. And the father wanted Jesus to come physically and touch, touch him, maybe shake him, maybe rub something on him, or just to have the physical contact. But Jesus said, go thy way. Thy son liveth. Go thy way. Thy son liveth. Your soul tonight will live. Your body tonight will live. Anything dead in your body tonight, it will live in Jesus' name. The word, the word, go thy way. Thy son liveth. And the man believed the word. That's how you get miracle. And the man believed the word. That's how you get salvation. Salvation comes when you believe the word of the Lord. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I call on the name of the Lord. You call on the name of the Lord. You say, I cannot save myself. All that I try, I try to turn over a new leaf. I try to reform myself. I try religion. I try whatever. All that did not change me. But I hear that thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. That's the word. You believe that word, salvation will come. And I look at the man come down before my son dies. And Jesus spoke the word and said, go back home. Go your way. Your son will not die. Your son will live. Anybody there? Can I send the words of Jesus to you? You will not die now. You will live. Can I tell you what Jesus is telling you? This sickness will not continue. You will be healed. You are going back home sound, healthy, well, healed in Jesus' name. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him. He didn't transfer that word to another person. He had spoken unto him. And he believed the word. And they were told. And he went his way. He didn't say, dear, start arguing, oh Lord. You don't know how serious the case is. This boy is about to die. Oh Lord, you don't understand. I took all that journey. And it's a long journey to come over here. Help me, please leave everything you're doing and go along with me so that I will see the signs and the wonders you spoke about. The Lord just said, go your way. Everything is all right. In your life, everything is all right. In your soul, everything is all right. And the man believed and his went his way. Look at verse 51. In verse 51, and as he was now going down, 
His servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. What did Jesus say before? Thy son liveth. What are the servants testifying? Thy son liveth. The words of Christ will be fulfilled in your life. What he said, you are well, you too will say, I am well. What he says, you are healed, you too will say, I am healed. And what he says, that you will see signs and wonders tonight. I said tonight, you will see signs and wonders. Freedom, you'll have freedom in your life today. And so they testified and they said, Thy son liveth. Look at verse 52. In verse 52, then inquired he of them the hour when he, the son, began to amend. When the son gradually and slowly began to amend. But look at the answer they gave, and they said unto him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. Instantaneously, the fever left him. Instantaneously, paralysis will leave you. Instantaneously, blindness will leave you instantaneously all your pains will leave you instantaneously tonight your cancer will vanish away instantaneously tonight that tuberculosis will vanish away the man was looking for a gradual healing when did he begin to amend and they said it's not amending 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 they said instantaneously immediately at the seventh hour the fever left him whatever is holding you down sickness paralysis infirmity impossibilities in your life whatever is holding you down powers of evil spirit and the power of satan instantaneously tonight that thing will leave you you understand that jesus loves everyone the same people at that time and people at this time he loves you as much as he loves that man and his power the word the power of his word is as great is as strong is as mighty is as powerful as when he spoke on that day and the fever left him they will leave you i said they will leave you and look at the first part of verse 53 it says so the father knew like you will know so the father knew i said like you will know that it was at the same hour in the which jesus said unto him thy son liveth it was that that same hour tonight at the same hour you give your life to Christ and we say Jesus is your Savior and Lord at that same hour you experience salvation tonight as we mentioned that Jesus Christ is the healer is the deliverer and is the redeemer and you accept that and you believe that that same hour deliverance and healing will come to you as we pray in the name of Jesus and we mention that name and then after the prayer whether we mention your sickness or not when we say in Jesus name we pray and you hear the final amen immediately that they will leave your body number one is the foundation number two is the freedom number three now is the faith personal faith in the savior of the world not not just the savior at Capernaum or in Jerusalem or in Nazareth he is the savior of the world look at Jesus was coming the next day 
And then John saw him, and he drew the attention of everybody, and he said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes the sin of the world away. And there you are, you are a man, a citizen of the world, a man of the world, a woman of the world. You're still living here in the world, and the sin that is common in the world is also apparent and visible in your life. You come to Christ tonight is the Savior of the world. It will take your guilt away. Do I have any good amen over there? It will take your condemnation away. And it will take the power of sin, the power that binds you. It will break the yoke and the power of sin away from your life in Jesus' name. He is the Savior of the world. There are people that are dignified like Nicodemus and they were religious people, respectable people, and they came, and because they're citizen of the world, Jesus gave him salvation. There is this Zacchaeus, he was rotting, completely rotting, not like Nicodemus, and then he came to the Lord too, and the Lord said, today, this day, salvation is entered into your house, whether you are up there, morally or you are down there morally wherever you are whatever your situation however dirty anyone may be he is the savior of the world as you have personal faith in christ tonight he will forgive every sin you ever committed in your life he'll give you peace of mind he'll give you the joy of salvation and then even your brothers and your sisters as you let them know and they hear Jesus telling them he came to save everyone, he'll save them too. He'll save your mother, he'll save your daddy, he'll save all your siblings, because whosoever, tell them, tell them, and bring them, let them know that Jesus makes no discrimination, that whoever they are, whatever they have done, salvation is coming to everyone. Point number three, personal faith in the Savior of the world. Personal faith in the Savior of the world. So the Father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth himself believed and his whole house himself believed and his whole house he knew that Jesus is the healer and the savior he believed the wife knew because the wife had been past weeping over their son my son is going my son is going and now the power of the Lord Jesus Christ came on that son and then she saw the mighty power and the goodness and the grace of God through Christ she believed and then the son himself I would have died but for Jesus I would have been forgotten but for Jesus I would have been maybe now in the grave but for Jesus he gave me healing and he's saying he still has another thing to give me salvation he also believed in fact the whole house believed and that's where you are tonight Lord I believe Lord I believe and what you get with believing on the Lord Jesus Christ is greater than what you can ever get in any other way. That's why the personal faith is very important tonight for you and for everyone hearing the sound of my voice. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to them that received him to them. He gave power 
to become the sons of God, even the people that believed on his name. And that word of faith is near you. It's in your mouth that if you will, if you will believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and confess with your mouth that Jesus is your Lord, you too, you will be saved. I said you will be saved. Tonight, signs and wonders coming to you. Say, coming to me. And I believe. And as you believe the Lord tonight, the power from the cross of Calvary who made him to be the final sacrifice, your substitute, your savior, all that power will come. Your sins will be totally forgiven. At the point you say, yes, Lord, I believe. He is my Savior. He is my Lord. Salvation will come to you. And then, whatever the sickness, no matter how serious that sickness is, when we mention the name of Jesus tonight, salvation comes and healing will come. Miracle will come. Signs and wonders will come. At the same hour that you believe on the Lord. There's no disappointment here tonight. The Lord is going to answer our prayer. And when you mention that name and you accept that name, believe that name, possess that name, freedom has come. Forgiveness has come. Salvation has come. And then secondly, Healing will come. Deliverance will come. And any yoke in your life tonight, 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 he'll take everything away. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. The Lord wants you to put expression to your faith. Faith without works faith without action is dead faith without expression is dead he wants you to express your faith like this man expressed his faith in the lord and wherever you are you want his forgiveness you want his salvation you want a renewal of your life you want a change the change and transformation that only Christ can bring. And you want him to totally forgive you, roll away your sin, and put everything in the depths of the sea of God's forgetfulness. Wherever you are, you want to express, you want to act out your personal faith in Christ as Savior tonight. Raise up your hand, raise up your hand wherever you are, on the ground over there, at the gallery over there, anywhere you are, raise up that hand, you're asking for forgiveness, you're asking for salvation, you're asking for transformation, you're asking that you will turn your life around and then the salvation from heaven will come in your soul, anywhere you are, any other time in any town in any congregation you are or maybe you're in your house online by yourself the lord is waiting for you now that you will express your faith in him as savior and then immediately at that same hour the forgiveness will come the peace of god will come and the salvation will come and the joy of salvation will be in your heart where are you the lord is waiting for you raise up your hand there if you're giving your life to the lord jesus christ you're turning away from your sin and you're coming to jesus as your savior where are you if you're raising up your hand anywhere just rise up wherever you are where are you rise up there god bless you god bless you God bless you. He wants to give you salvation. He wants to give you redemption. He wants to give you forgiveness. Raise up the hands and then stand up wherever you are. 
give expression to your faith, faith in Christ as your Savior. As we're standing up there, confess those things to the Lord. Say, Lord, I know my sins bring condemnation and will bring total, eternal separation from God. But now, Lord, I come to you and I'm asking, Lord, forgive me. Say, Lord, I believe that Jesus died for me on the cross of Calvary. Now I accept. Now I believe. Now I receive your salvation. I welcome you into my heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I believe whosoever calls upon you, you will not reject. I have called, you will not reject me. Thank you, Lord. I am saved. Thank you, Lord. My sins are forgiven. Thank you, Lord. I now belong to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Don't sit down yet. Father, tonight we thank you. We thank you because you sent Jesus Christ to be the Savior of the world and the Savior of every citizen in the world that will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. As these have indicated and have put action, expression to their faith, I pray, Lord, by your grace, in your mercy, and in your love, forgive them in Jesus' name. Bear witness in their hearts by your spirit that their sins are forgiven. Lord, put definite confirmation in their heart that all the sins they have confessed, all the sins they are forsaken, that that Lord, all those sins they are forgiven and wiped away in Jesus' name. And the grace to begin to live in newness of life, grant them that grace in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, the punishment of sin, the perdition, and the judgment should have, that should have come upon them, you roll everything away, and they are free from the sin, from the judgment, both now and ever, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the whole church say, Amen. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there. They'll give you some sleeves, and then you will feel the information there. It is to help us to keep on helping you so that the forgiveness and the freedom and the salvation will abide and remain in your life in Jesus' name. And the victory and the dominion that comes with that salvation, that dominion and the victory you keep in Jesus' name. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. We call on the state of us here to guide us and help us in this time of counseling. And then after that, we'll come back and then the same hour. All that infirmity and all that problem you carry will vanish away in Jesus' name. Keep standing. Keep standing. Keep standing. Our leaders, please quickly be fast. No counseling, just their data, name, address, phone number, write in capital letters, that's all. Be fast now. Fast is coming for miracle prayer. Don't move. Bosses are there waiting for you to take you back. 
Our leaders be fast. Gallery, down hall, be fast. Write legibly. Capital letter. Check up the, the digits. Let it be accurate. Have many bios on you. If you can write, they will assist you. Fast, fast. Thy signs and wonders coming your way now. Be fast, our leaders. Remember, halls one to ten. Right now, we have those are the main bow. So join it to your number now, our coordinators. Hall coordinators, please. Get two baskets. One for newcomers, one for the converts. Tonight, we didn't ask for the newcomers. Tomorrow, we shall do that because our time was not friendly. Be fast, please. When you are through, you know what to do. When you are, when you are done, you know what to do. Our hall coordinators, be fast. Capture the accurate data, the digits, count them, write in capital letter, write the address boldly. Tonight, we shall capture them, SMS, to thank them for coming. If you look at the program, behind the program, there's, there's a banquet. There's a banquet on the 1st of August, all over the states, all over the regions, all over the groups, all over the nations, if you like. And there's a package from the pastor. We shall give it to you now. We shall give you on the 1st of August in our headquarters churches. When you are done, let us know, please. You know what to do. Our hall coordinators. When you are done, you know what to do as we discussed. Make sure you write boldly, boldly, to guide the e-follow-up team. Tonight, they will send SMS to them. When you are done, waiting, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting for you. Don't go away. There's a miracle. Your name attached to, to, to it. So then tonight, you will see wonders here. When you are done, I'm waiting for you. Do something as I discussed. When you are done. The pastor is waiting already. Don't go away. Buses are there free. You don't pay any money, just free. They will go twice. Okay, you are done. Hall 8 is done. Hall 2 is done, yes? Hall 1, Hall 6 is done. Okay, Hall 1 is done. I'm seeing, yeah, you're almost done. God bless you. I'm waiting for the member here. God let us get the slips transferred to e follow up tonight to send them SMS. If you turn the program on your hand, there's a important information there. 1st of August, August 1st, 2 p.m. in a banquet, there you will receive pastor's package that will help you in life. Yes, I've seen you are done, or this is done. Yeah, hall 7 is done. Okay, hall 10 is done. Ralph, God bless you, is done. Okay, is done also. Is done. I think Pastor was set, sir. Was set. Was set. Was set to go. But done already. Then be, become the expectant. Tonight, you come out here for a testimony. Shall we say amen? And then, and then, tomorrow, don't miss it. The other, tomorrow, next tomorrow, don't miss it. Six days package. Don't miss it. It's a time, our time has come in cross River states to all the globe. Settle down now. Settle down. Settle down. No boss is moving until after the miracle prayer and testimony, then the boss will move. We shall make it. Just um, some minutes after eight. We shall make it. We we'll get home on time. And tomorrow, come on time. By 3, 3.33, we are here. 
invite others tomorrow. Tomorrow. And then Sunday is morning worship. And then evening crusade also. Those here, those uh, social media, please, wherever you are, France, America, are you alone in your room? Write down if you have met tonight, you have promised God. I'm, I'm, I won't go back again to sin. That's a way you can indicate on the screen where you are. We shall capture that also. Wherever you are, globally, France, even in Nigeria, all the states, in Africa, in Kenya, East Africa, West Africa, everywhere, Middle East, follow what you are doing here because it's a global campaign. I'm sure we are done. We are done. Then you will transfer that sleep now to e follow up, and tonight you will stay here and send them SMS appreciating their coming tonight. I, I'm, tonight, I didn't welcome newcomers. It was deliberate for time. Tomorrow, I welcome newcomers and those also you invite to the program. So, tomorrow, we shall have overflows, all the halls are behind here. So, come on time tomorrow. By three, you start coming. Join the buses free. Have bus stops all over the city and you come along and get the best. Shall we say amen? Say amen! God bless you. Now settle down. No movement now. No movement. Power is coming to you now. <clears throat> praise the Lord. Somebody there has said, Praise the Lord. That time has come. My time has come. Remember, Jesus Christ is the foundation of your healing, the foundation of your miracle, and is the foundation of signs and wonders in your life in Jesus' name. There's no other name given among men whereby you can be saved or healed or delivered. But that name, somebody shout that name, Jesus. And then is the one that gives us freedom. Freedom coming your way. Freedom from sickness. Freedom from suffering. Freedom from satanic attack. You are going to receive now in Jesus' name. By personal faith, personal faith in the Savior, in the healer, in the deliverer. It is that personal faith that makes you give expression and action to your faith. And after you hear the final amen, if you are blind, you'll open your eyes and see. If you were lame, you'll rise up and walk. And whatever swelling, whatever infirmity you have in your body, when you have that final amen and you put personal faith and you put expression to that faith in your life, a miracle will explode in your life there. You will give testimony. Where are you? You will give testimony. Raise up that hand and lay the other hand where you have the challenge. And as you believe, the Lord will honor your personal faith. Are you ready? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the assurance we have that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that everything he does is in that name, is in his word. I send forth your word of power and your word of healing upon everyone now. Touch them, heal them in Jesus' name. 
by your stripes were healed and you sent the word and you healed them and you take infirmity and sickness from everyone as your word enters i pray that your word that comes to everyone now will bring healing will bring deliverance will bring signs and wonders and will bring the breaking of you from every life in jesus name open those blind eyes make those lame weak legs to rise up and walk in jesus name lord put those broken bones together and make them strong by the name and the word of the lord in jesus name cancer vanish away tuberculosis vanish away incurable disease vanish away in jesus name that is your blood dry up right now in jesus name everyone here everyone there everyone everywhere i send christ's power in the word unto you right now and as the word comes to you and you embrace it and receive it and believe it receive your healing in jesus name lord give the signs and wonders manifest the healing manifest the deliverance at this very moment now in jesus name we thank you because we know it is done in jesus name i pray amen you got it i got it now you put expression to your faith and whatever you were not able to do before do it now on the basis of that personal faith your miracle is there already.